Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today's topic is the so-called QNET formula, um, which is secretly a, a, a theorem or QNET theorem, whatever, a theorem in algebra and not so much in topology. It's about um, how the tensor product of chain complexes uh, behaves with respect to its homology. So what is the relation between the tensor product of the homology and the tensor product of the chain complexes? So in topological formulation, it would be something like, uh, what about the product of spaces and the product of its homology? It's kind of what you try to measure. And so let's go to a running example that I will use in this, um, this today's video. So um, best example for the QNET formula is actually the projective plane or more generally the real projective spaces. Uh, to remind you, it has a cell structure given by cells in dimension zero, one, and two, and it's constructed by this um, antipole construction here, which, for example, puts Australia in the middle of the uh, Atlantic Ocean, right? It's an antipodal map on uh, the corresponding S2 in this case. And you get a chain complex from it. And I would like to write down in the following simplified notation, I will underline degree zero. So this is degree zero, so C0. And I will draw a dot for each copy of Z, the integers, because in this case, um, there are, I only have those three modules sitting here, Z, 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 corresponding to my cells. And just draw a dot. And I, my arrows here are just very simple multiplication maps. And I even don't bother to draw the arrow, um, which is multiplication by zero. So uh, this first map is multiplication by zero. But for the projective plane, you always get this chain complex multiplication by zero, multiplication by two, multiplication by zero, multiplication by two, because the antipodal map is given by um, flipping the sign in a certain number of components. And depending on whether in which dimension you are, this number of components is even or odd. And this gives you an even or odd parity uh, on the chain complex. Anyway, so what I'm saying here is I have a type zero map, I have a times two map, I don't draw the times zero map. And the homology is here, of course, super easy to compute. Um, so in degree zero, uh, the incoming map is zero, the outgoing map is zero, so I just write a Z. In degree two, the outgoing map is uh, injective, so uh, there's nothing going on. And in degree one, the outgoing map is zero and the ingoing map is two, so I write a Z mod two. And I write this little T here to remind myself that I'm, this is actually uh, the first homology here. So the homology here is uh, zero homology Z, First homology is Z mod two. Not too bad, not too bad. Just You just obtain it from the cell complex. Um, and then you try to do something like RP2 times RP2. So now what is the product structure of topology in terms of algebra? So RP2 times RP2 has also a very easy chain complex just by uh, cells in the corresponding dimensions. And you will see in a second why that's what you want. So this is how it works. So this is how you very easily write down the chain complex corresponding to a product. So you think of it like being a square. So you put one chain complex here and you put one chain complex here and you just copy it. The one from the bottom, you just copy it. And um, let me give this um, another color. So this is red and you just copy the other one also and you get this grid-like pattern. So in this case here, as you can see, it's the same chain complex, of course, because that's the same same spaces, I have my little chain complex uh, dot uh, arrow two to dot arrow zero to dot. And I have the same upwards dot arrow two to dot arrow uh, zero to dot. And I just copy it in the grid picture. In particular, I get those nine cells. So these are my nine cells and they still represent copies of Z. And I also copy just the arrows. As you can see, I just copy the arrows as a little sign that I would like to ignore um, they need to put a little sign into here such that it works, but basically that's what it is. You write it on the grid. Here's your first chain complex, here's your second chain complex. You copy this one, you copy this one, and you get the chain complex of the um, of this space, of the product space, in the following way. So now you take direct sums along diagonals. That's really a bit complicated, uh, but that's what you do. And this gives you your corresponding uh, chain groups. So the first one is C0, then C2, C1, C2, C3, C4. I said again, which of course is very easy. I will write down the chain complex in a maybe more familiar uh, notion in a second, the language in a second. But basically it's very easy. It's it's product, right? You take uh, you take complex here, you just take a chain complex here, you mirror it, you mirror this one, and you connect the maps, uh, the, the chains accordingly along those diagonals. 
and it's exactly the same construction as the tensor product of chain complexes. The tensor product of chain complexes is actually defined to be exactly what I just showed you. And any computer homology that what we would be interested in, and here this is a typo, of course, I mean uh, the homology of the product space. Um, and you just do it in the chain complex, and this is what you get. And well, I will explain in a second uh, that this is actually not the same as the tensor product of the homologies. Right? So the tensor product of the chain complex is the same as the uh, chain complex of the product, but the tensor product of homologies is not the same as the uh, the homology of the product. So the product in the topolo topological sense, which is a product of spaces, is not sent to the product in um, your target category in vector spaces, which would be the tensor product. It's not quite sent to, um, so product is not sent to product, which is a little bit of a flaw. And the Kuhnert formula kind of measure, uh, measures this difference. What is the difference between uh, the homology of the product and the, the tensor product of the homologies? So I did this calculation here into this chain complex. I just wrote it down uh, in more familiar notion if you kind of want to have a look at the slides which are linked in the description anyway. And I computed the homology. It's a really cute example to get a, to, to get a hold of the Kuhnert formula. And it turns out that this guy actually wants to have something in degree three, while this guy clearly doesn't. So this guy clearly doesn't have anything in degree three because it's, it's, it was this one, Z, uh, direct sum, this is direct sum, z mod 2. And if you multiply this with itself, you get at best t squared here, of course, you don't get anything uh, in degree 3. Turns out that the homology itself of the product actually wants to have something in degree 3. And this is picked out by the Kuhnert formula, which has a slightly complicated description. Um, but it's actually not so bad. So before I go to the Kuhnert formula in general, which is the top one here, uh, let me just mention that as soon as you want to work over something like Q or R or any funny field of characteristic zero, um, actually there is no flaw and kind of the, the Kuhnert formula will tell you that yes, the product of space is sent to the product of uh, in the target category, so the tensor product in this case. Very nice, in particular, um, really, really beautiful. So the Poincaré polynomial of the product is just a product of the Poincaré polynomials. As soon as you work over a reasonably nice field like Q, that's actually true. It's just not true in general, as we have seen in our example of uh, the projective plane where you have this error term, which would die, by the way, uh, over Q. And then you upstairs, you have the formula. It's kind of the same. It's kind of wanting to say that this is the homology. And I've written down the homology, homology version and the cohomology version, which are the same anyway, up to, up to some uh, wiggling. Um, so this kind of wants to say that this one is isomorphic but not quite as an error term given by computing the torsion. Okay, there's a torsion error term and it looks a bit horrible, but it's actually not so bad. It's a closed formula that, that works actually for everything. It's kind of the point. So the point here is I would, I would like to remember is over reasonable fields, actually the product is sent to the product. And for example, for the Poincaré polynomials, then you get the product is sent to the product, which is pretty cool. Um, in general, it's not quite true. And this formula up here, measures the difference between the two. It turns out that the formula over Q is actually pretty good. It also identifies cohomology rings for you. Again, this can, kind of can only really work over Q because the error term on my previous slide would die, right? So this, we are in this situation right now. And it turns out that basically it is also an isomorphism of cohomology rings, which is pretty cool. So you can actually uh, compute the uh, cohomology structure uh, of the product by using the um, cohomologies separately for each piece of the product. So yeah, it, it's not quite true, it's, it's, it's true enough. There's a sign, of course, like every, every, every time you do homology, there's a sign. Every time you do cohomology, there's a sign. Um, the product is signed anyway, there's a sign. Uh, anyway, so up to this funny sign, this is actually true. So let's have a look where the sign actually comes from. It comes from this dimension nonsense and that you're in a cup product have, it's kind of a graded product. You have, you have the sign turning up when you swap factors, depending on in, in what homological degree you sit. So for the torus, for example, which is of course just a product of S1s, um, the cohomology ring of S1 is not really hard to compute. It's Qx mod x squared. The homology ring of the torus is exterior algebra. It's a very nice result. It's an exterior algebra in Q to the D, so in um, D variables. And for example, um, 
exterior algebra in Q squared is basically isomorphic, and I should put basically isomorphic to the tensor product of this space. So this one tends to tensor itself. Um, not quite, because you have this one would be commutative and the other one is anti-commutative. So you kind of need to interpret this tensor product in an anti-commutative way and you're good to go. So up to this kind of stupid sign issue that turns up here, this is exactly what it does, right? In the exterior algebra, you would have x squared is zero and you have it locally in each component of the circle. You just piece them together. And the only thing is it's a little bit flawed is the commutativity relation between, between the pieces and you throw in a sign and you would could, um, actually compute the cohomologering of the torus just by knowing the cohomologering um, of the circle. This has, as I said, the two slight catches. First of all, there's a sign. You have to be a little bit careful with the sign. It's homology, you always have to be careful with the sign. And um, it's only uh, over something like Q. So as soon as you have a torsion term here, you actually can't do really anything anymore. Anyway, um, so the credit formula kind of measures this problem that arises in homology, that the homology of a product is not sent to the product of homologies, but only quite. It's, it's only almost true. It's sent to the homology of the product up to an error term. And the Kuhnert formula gives you, well, it's not very nice formula. It's not so bad either, but it's a closed formula. And that's the whole point. It's a closed formula um, for you to actually compute the error in this um, description. And again, kind of the main important case in some sense, well, this is a very debatable opinion, of course. Uh, it's probably not a very popular opinion, but the most uh, important case is when the underlying field is Q. And in this case, there is there's no error term and really the product just goes to the product, which is a pretty cool result actually. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.